Hello everyone, myself Enu Deiranjan God, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology. So today we are going to have a session in shear of open section beams on structural idealization. In the last session, we have seen uh, the beams which are bending and in which the direct stress distribution is asked to calculate by using a structural idealization. So the learning outcomes in this module are students are able to analyze shear of open section beams by considering idealization and students are able to solve problems on shear of open section beams. Now, and uh, let's consider an open section beam and like this in which uh, uh, stringers are attached to the skin of the beam as shown in figure and you can see here the length is considered as delta z for each boom and then there are uh, many number of booms are there so for example let's assume r number of booms are there so if you try to uh, look at, at this one and there are shear loads which are acting that is sx is the horizontal shear load and sy is the vertical shear load and if you try to consider any one boom uh, from this uh, open section beam and try to represent all the possible possible forces for example and let us try to represent the stress on this uh, boom is sigma z in this direction and on the opposite direction to it the stress can be taken as sigma z plus dou sigma z by dou z into delta z which is nothing but the incremental stress we considered and let us consider the boom area as br and let us assume uh, there is shear flow that is q1 is acting here and the q1 q2 shear flow is acting on the other side okay and if you look at the adjacent panel Again, there will be equal and opposite shear flows that will be there. Here it is Q2 and here it will be Q1. And the uh, uh, length of this boom, what we considered is nothing but, you know, that is delta Z. Okay. So, with this, the shear flow distribution in the cross section of an open section beam is based on to the equilibrium equation. Now, the thickness T in this equation refers to the direct stress carrying thickness and that is TD of the skin and the shear flow equation may be rewritten so this is the shear flow equation that we got that is uh, from the earlier sessions that is the qs the shear flow in open section beam is equal to minus of sx ixx minus sy ixy divided by ixx iyy minus i square xy integral 0 to s td into x ds minus of sy iyy minus c minus sx into ixy divided by ixx iyy minus i square xy integral 0 to s td into y into ds. So, this is the open section formula which we have seen for the plane sections in the previous analysis. Now, here since we got uh, booms, then the thickness of the skin, the td is made equal to uh, t in which the skin is fully effective in carrying the direct stress and uh, you can consider td equal to 0. Uh, if the skin is assumed to carry only the shear stresses okay so with this assumption and our formula the, if you consider earth boom in the elemental length of the beam as shown in figure which carries shear loads sx and sy acting through the shear center so these shear loads produce direct stresses due to bending in the booms and the skin and the shear stresses in the skin so if you try to see the shear flows, if the shear flows in the skin adjacent to the earth boom of the cross sectional area BR are Q1 and Q2, then from the diagram which we have seen earlier, so you can consider the equilibrium. So, if you look at the equilibrium from this diagram, so first sigma z plus dou sigma z by dou z into delta z into it should be multiplying with its area which is nothing but BR, okay and that will become the force equilibrium similarly for sigma z sigma z into br that will become the another force in opposite to it and similarly q1 q2s are the shear flows and uh, we need to multiply with respective length for example so q1 into delta z and q2 into delta z so q1 is a shear flow so when you multiply with respective length it becomes a force again you can consider the directions q2 direction is in terms of this uh, stress increment and q1 direction is in terms of you know sigma z so by considering all this you can write the equilibrium equation sigma z plus dou sigma z by dou z into delta z into br minus sigma z into br plus q2 into 2 sigma z minus q1 into sigma z that is equal to 0 in which sigma z into br gets cancelled 
and you left with uh, dou sigma z by dou z into delta z into br plus q2 into delta z minus q1 into delta z equal to 0. So, in all these things, you can consider delta z, you can take common and send it equal to the, you know, outside of the equal sign and you left with q2 minus q1 equals to minus of dou sigma z by dou z into br, okay. Now, if you try to look at, at this one, dou sigma z by dou z, uh, sigma z is nothing but the direct stress and which we have, we know the formula that is nothing but, you know, sigma z equals to m y i x x minus m x i x y divided by i x x i y y minus i square x y of x plus m x i y y minus m y i x y divided by i x x i y y minus i square x y of y. So, this is the formula for sigma z. Now, that sigma z has to be differentiated with respect to z. Now, that is shown here dou m y by dou z and similarly the second term dou m x by dou z and the third term dou m x by dou z and dou m y by dou z. And we know from the basics of uh, solid mechanics that the rate of sh uh, rate of change of bending moment is nothing but given as shear force. Okay, so shear force we can write F or S so that dou m y by dou z gives the shear force in x direction that is S x and here dou m x by dou z gives the shear force in y direction. Similarly, this is S y and this is x x S x. So if you try to replace this you are going to get B, uh, B R Y X R and here it is B R Y R so that the shear flow formula for Q2 minus Q1 becomes minus of S X I X X minus S Y I X Y by I X X I Y Y I square X Y into B R X R minus of S Y I Y Y minus S X I X Y divided by I X X I Y Y minus I square X Y of B R Y R. So, this is the formula for shear flow in open section beams when the booms are present that means when the idealization is came into picture okay so the above equation it gives the change in shear flow induced by a boom which itself is subjected to the direct load sigma z into br so this formula we are going to consider and we are going to solve problems by using this formula so each time a boom is encountered the shear flow is incremented by this amount so that if at any distance s around the profile of the section if n booms have been passed, then you can write the shear flow at the point is given by, you know, minus of Sx Ixx minus Sy Ixy divided by Ixx Iy minus I square Xy. And uh, then what you are adding? Integral 0 to S Td into X into Ds plus Br into Xr. Here we are adding integral 0 to S Td into Y into Ds plus summation Br into Yr. Okay. So, this Td into Y into Ds usually uh, will take it for the panels and this formula we use for the booms. So, sometimes he may give that you know uh, the direct stress are carrying by the booms and also the shear the skin is also effective in taking the bending loads. If that is the case you need to consider these two otherwise this is only sufficient to consider if only direct stress carrying by the booms and the shear stress carrying by the panels then you can neglect this one and uh, formula holds good with the second terms okay so this is a formula which we need to use now let's try to look into one problem on this one and uh, the channel section here we are considering and again with the booms here sig 1 2 3 4 and uh, the question is to calculate the shear flow distribution in the channel section shown in figure produced by a vertical shear load of 4.8 kilo newton acting through its shear center. Assume that the walls of the section are only effective in resisting shear stresses while the booms each of area 300 mm square carry all the direct stresses. Okay. So, here he mentioned that the skin is effective in taking the shear stresses while the booms are responsible for taking the direct stresses and he has given four, four areas and B1 equals to B2 equals to B3 equals to before all the four boom areas are equal, he has given that is given as 300 mm square. Okay, and he is asking to calculate the shear flow distribution produced by the vertical shear load. He has given Sy equals to 4.8 kilonewton. So that you can write 4.8 into 
10 to the power of 3 newton so this is nothing but you know sy that is given and he mentioned that it is acting through the shear center that means the twisting of the section is neglected okay that means when the shear load is acting through the shear center there exists no twist okay so by considering this one you need to collect the shear flow formula so if you look at the formula for shear flow distribution and also since the given section is symmetrical we can assume that ixy as 0 and since the horizontal shear load is not given you can substitute sx is also 0 and if you look at the formula for this one sx is 0 and ixy is 0 so that completely this goes to 0 and here also ixy is become 0 here and you left with only these two term and in which S iyy also gets cancelled so you left with only minus sy by ixx summation br yr so that is a formula for shear flow what you have you can consider it as equation one okay so that has been shown here in the diagram that is qs that is equals to minus sy by ixx summation r equals to one to infinity br pi r so you can consider that as the first equation now in which sy is the load is a vertical shear load that is given and you need to calculate the moment of inertia ixx and the formula for moment of inertia ixx is nothing but summation br yr square okay then you have to look at look into this problem and uh, there are four booms are there and each boom area is 300 and if you look at it, the distance uh, central distance uh, from boom 1 to the centroid here it is uh, 200 this is also 200 this is minus 200 for boom 3 and this is minus 200 for boom 4 so anyway we are going to square it so it is minus uh, 200 into plus or minus 200 whole square that is the moment of inertia what we get so you will get moment of inertia as 48 into 10 to the power of 6 newton mm power 4 okay so once you get this moment of inertia 48 into 10 power 6 you need to substitute in the formula for ix x and uh, qs equals to sy that is minus 4.8 into 10 power 3 ixx we are substituting it as 48 into 10 to the power of 6 summation br yr and when you try to cancel out this one you are going to get qs equals to minus 10 to the power of minus 4 summation r equals to 1 to n br yr you can consider this as equation number 2 okay so qs is equals to minus 10 to the power of minus 4 summation br yr we got okay so after that you need to start finding the shear flow distribution for panel 1 2 2 3 3 4 okay so the shear flow distribution for panel 1 2 so for example uh, q that we got is 10 to the power of minus 4 summation br yr and if you are trying to write for 1 2 you have to write 10 to the power of minus 4 and you have to write the boom area of 1 which is nothing but 300 and its respective y distance that you get 200 so you are you're going to get 6 minus 6 newton per mm okay similarly you have to write 2 3 and for minus 10 to the power of minus 4 you have to look for the boom area of 2 again that is 300 and the boom area is again 200 and you have to add the starting shear flow for 2 3 which is nothing but minus 6 q 1 2 and you will get minus 6 minus 6 that is equals to minus 12 newton per mm okay and next if you will try to write for 3 4 minus 10 to the power of minus 4 into you have to look for the boom area of 3 and its respective y distance so boom area 3 is 300 only but its y distance uh, from the central axis is minus 200 and into that minus 12 the starting shear flow for 3 4 would be 2 3 that you have to add so you are going to get minus 10 to, uh, minus uh, here you are going to get plus 6 minus 12 and total together you are going to get minus 6 newton per mm as the shear flow 3 4 okay so this is how we try to calculate the shear flow distribution in open section beams which are subjected to booms and uh, so this is the open section so you will have a straight away procedure for example when you have a closed section that is given to us then what is nothing but qs naught the additional constant shear flow we have to add to this open section beam for problem so up to here it is considered as qb then it will be qs naught so the closed section shear flow formula 
holds good but you need to add the additional constant shear flow creates not and also the analysis also uh, slightly differs from the open section beam because opens for the all the open section beams uh, you can consider the starting uh, shear flow at the open section that means q1 at 1 q1 will be 0 okay similarly at open section 4 q4 will be 0 but whereas for the closed section you don't have that uh, boundary for s so therefore you need to make a cut somewhere in the section and then follow the rest of the open section shear flow and then you have to take the moment about a suitable point to find out what is exactly that qs naught that means if you don't make a cut there would have been some shear flow in that wall so that qs naught you have to calculate first and then you have to add this qs naught to all the open section shear flow which we find after making a cut but then you are going to get the actual shear flow okay so that's all from uh, today's class and in the next class we are going to see the effect of uh, shear flow distribution uh, in the closed section beam subjected to uh, you know any shear loads and uh, by using idealization how we can able to find out the shear flow distribution or shear center that we will see in the next class so thank you everyone for watching